hey everybody welcome back to our channel today we're going to show you and talk to you about these beautiful little livestock guard dog puppies that we just picked up If you're new to our channel, we're two rebels off grid. We left Colorado as fast as we could, came out to Cochise County, Arizona, and are starting a new life on our homestead. If you're new to our channel, just browsing, go ahead and subscribe if you don't mind. And for those who like this video at the end, go ahead and like it. Okay, so Carrie and I have been discussing getting livestock guardian dogs. A long time ago when we were in Colorado, we did a video on different varieties of uh, livestock dogs. And so we it's time to get serious. We need to get something out here that will protect this when we're sleeping and be our first line of defense on the perimeter. They will eventually be free roaming and everything, but first we needed to build a shelter. There was a few reasons that prompted us to go ahead and get our livestock guard dogs now. We live in an area of rural, rural Arizona that does have a lot of coyote packs and we hear them a lot at night. We see them during the day and they were starting to be more comfortable and getting closer to where our living area is. And most of you know, we do have two house dogs that are not livestock guard dogs and they are, they're city slickers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have experience with coyotes or being outside and they're, they're really not meant for that. So we, um, we wanted to get our livestock guard dogs now before we actually have livestock just for the simple reason that we feel like it might be overwhelming to get livestock and puppies at the same time. So we wanted to get these guys, these girls before we get too settled on our homestead and start getting them trained. They've grown up in Northern Michigan, these little, little girls have, and they are used to being outside 100% of the time, which is weird for us. But part of making this work is making sure that they are safe and secure until they are big enough to protect our homestead and the two ways that we're doing that right now is obviously we're keeping a real close eye on them but um, we went ahead and we built them this shelter and we can lock this shelter at night um, do you want to talk to them a little bit about the construction of it because we did some specific things with this shelter that we want to talk to you about that we think will be really helpful. Yeah, the shelter, we kind of knew that it's going to be a temporary thing because these dogs typically like to sleep outside with the, with the in our instance, it's going to be the sheep. And they'll live with the sheep, they'll be outside with the sheep, and they don't really like indoors at all eventually. And I know there's a big controversy on, um, there's a division in opinion on the some people think it's very unethical to keep their dogs outside and some people believe that it's perfectly fine uh, i guess it depends on the people that you're talking about you talk to farmers and they definitely would consider that same with like uh cats uh, they definitely think that that's absolutely normal and they actually would say that the dogs and the animals prefer it so let's talk a little bit more about having dogs that stay outside 100% of the time. I know that some of you are going to be upset about this and we understand because we didn't understand what the purpose of a livestock guard was, livestock guard dog was for a while either until we started doing research and understanding more, especially particular breeds like Great Pyrenees. They've actually been bred for 3000 years to live outdoors and protect people's livestock, protect people's property and homes, and they prefer to live outdoors. Now, some of you also might be concerned about the fact that they have a very thick, heavy, they're a double-coated dog. They, like we said earlier, they have been born and raised in northern Michigan, where the high during the day does not get over 35. They literally have been sleeping in snow, and that's kind of a big deal because coming to our climate, it's a little warmer. We still get pretty cold. We're down below freezing at night, but during the day, right now we're usually in the 50s, sometimes 40s, sometimes 60s. But the double-coated dog is actually a what they consider to be a weatherproof dog. 
So if you're wondering, oh my gosh, those dogs are not gonna work in your climate, that is absolutely not true. They're very popular here and they're especially used for sheep protection. And they're great for protecting um, poultry and they'll also protect, they'll even protect your cats that live outside. With that being said, and just knowing that they have a history of living in warm climates and cold climates, and all the research we've done, we have decided that we will go ahead and go with keeping them outside most of the time. We will bring them in occasionally just to teach them how to be inside and have manners, um, but they're really meant to stay outside all the time. I guess they're really popular in Texas and Texas kind of mm -hmm. has the same climate as us here. Knowing that they're just puppies, they're just nine weeks and two days old, they are in no way, shape or form ready to protect from coyotes and bobcats and things like that that we have here that are natural predators. They will be when they get a little older, but right now what we need to do is we need to keep them outside socialize them with our dogs and um, and with us because they're still learning about us and learning about our property um, and until they're ready to do that we need to keep them safely in their dog house at night. Willow loves to collect sticks and pieces of wood. She's got a little collection going over here as we've been building. She's picking up our scraps. <laughs> Willow, what is that? Willow girl. Hi Willers. So the doghouse we built is, it's four feet wide by four feet tall by four feet deep. And it does have a door on it that we can, we can close it and lock it from the outside. We decided to go ahead and install very small hardware mesh cloth into the door. And we did that for a couple reasons. One, we want to be able to have them see out while they're sleeping at night so that if it, there is a predator they can see it and alert us to it so that we can come out and check on them and we also wanted to be able to see in and we also wanted them to have good air circulation in there so that was really important it's also to keep things out like um, snakes and spiders and things like that that crawl around until they get a little bigger and are able to handle that. So the door eventually will come off, but inside their doghouse, we've put down uh, pine shavings and they've got a couple big blankets in there. And then um, it's very secure. So that was the first part of keeping them secure at night. And then we added a fence to it. It's a five foot tall, uh, two by four fencing. Uh, just to keep the predators out. And we also added a third layer of security by putting in a, a motion sensor lighting so mm -hmm. that the dogs can see, we can see from the trailer, we can look out if the light's on, we know it's uh, something's walking around the fence line mm -hmm. and we can address that. But uh, yeah, it's like we said, this is just temporary. They're not gonna stay in there. Once they get big enough to protect themselves, uh, they're not gonna be in that fenced in area. They're not gonna be in that dog house unless they want to. Uh, and then we'll repurpose it for goats or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> so here they are in their dog house. They're actually getting really used to it. Um, a couple little things that I wanna point out. We made this little lip on it to try to keep the bedding material in. It doesn't work that well. <laughs> But it helps a little bit and they're getting really comfortable in this. We leave the door open for them during the day so they can come in and out and get out of the sun if they need to. Um, they're just absolutely precious and they're very sweet and socialized. They've grown up on a farm. They have been around cats. They've been around farm animals. They've been around other dogs, house dogs and um, and farm, farm dogs, livestock guard dogs, just like them. And as you can see, they're going to be, they're going to be big girls. They've got big paws, but these girls are great Pyrenees. And we actually originally were looking at, um, getting Maremma sheep dogs. And the reason was because they're very similar to this breed, but they're a little bit smaller. Um, when we started doing more research, we started seeing that Maremma sheep dogs are difficult to find unregistered, which means they're very, very expensive. We're talking 2,500 to 3,000 per dog. And that was just not in our budget. So we made the decision to go with Great Pyrenees. We've heard wonderful things about them in this area. And um, we went with unregistered purebred Pyrenees. So 
it was kind of difficult to find that. You can find a lot of Pyrenees that are mixed with other breeds and we didn't want to do that. We want to preserve the integrity of this dog that's been bred so specifically for protecting, for protecting livestock. Um, <laughs> they need a little, a little stool. That'll just get easier for them as they get bigger. Um, but yeah, they were, the price tag on these was quite a bit less than, significantly less than registered dogs. And we're not showing them. They're going to be working dogs and uh, protecting our farmstead. So we found these two girls. And by the way, I want to give you their names because this was kind of a big thing. Um, they are named Luna. And I'll tell you which one is which. So this is, this is Ursa. She has a rainbow colored collar on. And Ursa is actually a name of a constellation. And it means big bear. And so when we see these girls, we think they look like little baby polar bears. So this is Ursa. And then Luna's over here in the corner. And um, she's obviously Luna. She's named for the moon. And it's interesting. These dogs are actually nocturnal. Um, they work a lot at night. And they, they sleep more during the day, which we're not used to either. It's kind of the opposite but, um, of what we're used to. But uh, we found them actually online. I'm on several Facebook groups that um, deal with training livestock guard dogs and finding jobs for livestock guard dogs because that's what they, they were looking for jobs when they were posted. So the gal that had them is a breeder and she's got um, a great history and they're just wonderful little pups. They're just little sweethearts, but we ended up having to drive out to Texas to get them because she came down, drove down from Michigan. We decided we did not want to put these girls on a plane. It just seems like a kind of a cruel thing to do when they're this little. I know people do that, but we decided we'd rather drive and get them, um, which we did. So we drove out to Dalhart, Texas and met up with her a couple days ago did the swap out, got him situated in the back of our car in a, a kennel, and um, made the drive back here to Arizona. He's so sweet. You want to be such a baby dog? So I guess you're wondering what the role of our two rebels is now. You think that they've retired their position, but no, they're actually the last bastion of defense, right? <laughs> so these guys are our, our front line. And they get past that, and our dogs will surely bark and let us be alert of anything around. Um, and we've been noticing that they like, our rebels like to bark when these two are barking too. So these two are just now learning their voice. They're just starting to bark instead of whimper. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. But Yeah, it's kind of funny. I just have to tell you guys a cute story when we were driving home. We know, you guys that know our dogs, uh, the Zoe is a Chihuahua mix, and uh, she's older, she's nine, and Willow is a Australian Shepherd mix, and she's four. Willow has always been very dog friendly, and she's really great with other dogs. Zoe, not so much. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Zoe decided that she was going to bark at them pretty much nonstop for the first mm, two and a half or three hours of the drive. These guys were totally quiet. They weren't they weren't even whimpering or anything. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, one of them starts barking back at Zoe. And Zoe completely like froze. And then she I turned around and I was watching her and she just looked a little bit startled. But you know what? She stopped barking. And then it was a nice quiet ride. She probably realized that they were dogs and not, you know, something different in the back. Yeah, exactly. So we're watching Zoe very carefully. We watch Willow around them too, but Zoe and Willow are our house dogs. So they're, they live in the house. They're, they're treated differently. They're not, they weren't bred to be or raised to be protectors, except, you know, the barking and things like that. These girls are going to get big. They're probably going to be in the neighborhood of a hundred to maybe 120 pounds. I'm not, we're not exactly sure, but they're going to be big dogs. Um, so and our dogs know that their role is to be house dogs. They're definitely jealous of these two, yeah. right? But they don't know what's going on yet. And yeah. uh, as long as we keep letting the the rebels go indoors and we still give them snacks and all that stuff and they see that they're different, you know. And uh, we're hoping to take them for walks, all four together, so that they know they're all part of the same pack, you know, yeah. just have different, 
having different ro roles to fill, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but these girls are very sweet, so we're really excited to have them. Yeah, you'll be seeing lots of videos of these ladies here. It's not going to be the last uh, video for sure. Just the beginning. Yeah. But uh, let's uh, conclude this video. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We know that a lot of you are going to have opinion and that's fine. You can have you can have your opinion. We have ours. And of course, we're kind of learning as we go. But we've done so much research and reading and we've talked to so many other people in the area that are raising livestock guard dogs and trying to get the best advice that we can. Of course, we're going to make mistakes, but we have a lot of experience with animals and we think this is a real good choice for us. Yep. So like we said, if you guys like this video, go ahead and uh, hit that thumbs, but thumbs up button and uh, we'll uh, see you in the next video. Yeah. See you soon.